there yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Saturday, September the 24th, 2022 and this is video number 156. How are you all doing? I hope you're well and staying safe. Now today's a very special day for someone we love in our family and that is my mother-in-law's birthday, Chad's mum, and I want to wish her a very happy birthday. As you can tell by the title down below, this video I'm going to be talking about lots of whips, nothing finished, a lot of progress made on slow growing projects, lots of learns. I've, I've got something here that I haven't shown you before and it's uh, using a color combination. I'd like to get your opinion on that. And as always, I love reading your comments. So if you've got anything to say or if you've got any questions for me, add them down below in the comment section of this video. I want to say thank you to all the commenters as well on the last video where I was doing an unboxing of an online purchase that I made from pleta.bg which is situated over in Bulgaria so I got some Bulgarian yarn and it was all in the Stenley line so if you're interested in that video I will link it down below and what I had created was this beautiful pattern design from my friend Crystal over at Bag of Day Hi Crystal, you knocked this one out of the park. It's called the Post Virus Shawl and I will link the tutorial and also the paid for pattern down below if you're interested in going along and learning how to make it. So I used a line of Stanley called the Merino 1000 Cake. I guess they're saying it's 1000 because there's 1000 meters. Now I did not use the whole ball and I talk about it in that video. So if you want to go and learn more about it, Go visit Crystal and go visit my last video. So if you're new here, I set this channel up to talk about all of my yarny goodies. So that is when I'm making something in knit or crochet. I dabble a little bit in, in uh, yarn dyeing. So if that thing is of interest to you, then please stick around. Later down the way, I'll also catch you up on a excursion that I took my folks down to a, a township called Chimanus, which is here on the island. And it will be a little bit of a tour walk of all the wonderful murals down there. It's quite a hot spot for murals if you love murals. And there's a mural around where I live in Courtney that uh, also flags a mural that's quite close to home. And I wanna uh, explore that with you as well and tell you a little bit about that mural. So let's get started. My first whip that I'm gonna talk about is well and truly on its way to almost being completed. I did show it as a new cast on two weeks ago in a podcast that I uploaded and it used the ship jizz. I can't say that word. It's the mini set called Sky's Light and this was a generous gift from a friend who would like to remain anonymous. You know who you are so thank you so much for this delightful gift and this is the second set that I have. I didn't need to use this one, but I have it here to show you. Look at how beautiful this is. Now, these are all minis. They're 100% premium cotton, and they do have a little bit of a sheen to them. I really like working with them. There are some limitations with the 100% cotton, which you would expect with cotton. It doesn't really have much of a give when you're working with it. Uh, and I do like that they have set it up in a way that you can see how the colors gradate from over here in these blues all the way to a green. It's a beautiful transition. And I thought the guesswork is taken out. I can just add them into my project as they are uh, color coordinated already for me. So wonderful, wonderful, beautiful gift. I will keep this uh, for another project. And I'm thinking more of what I've been doing, like shawls or wraps are a great idea for this. So the pattern, which I did modify a little bit, purely because I found it very hard to do a certain stitch that was inside of the pattern. And it needed to be more of elastic, kind of a more animal fiber that uh, the yarn could stretch a little bit better. Uh, so I was having a lot of difficulty with the 100% cotton doing that stitch. So it is the Spark Light Wrap, Spark Light Wrap by Erin Kurup. And I'm sorry, Erin, Erin, if I'm saying your name incorrectly. Uh, it's a wonderful pattern. It's paid for. So if you are going off to uh, follow my link 
to follow where this pattern is, please shop around because there might be other areas where uh, there's a discount of patterns or my place might not be the cheapest. So do shop around when you're uh, buying the pattern. Uh, absolutely love it. So let's take a look. I did pair this with a larger full 100 gram hank and it is the Knit Picks Kettle Dyed Hawthorne Fingering Weight Yarn. And this is the color here. So that is gonna run through the whole of my wrap. And it's a wonderful kind of almost charcoal -y, purple, very dark and in parts where it doesn't uh, soak in all that lovely dye color. There's a little bit of the um, base yarn color that comes through. I like that idea because it gives it a weathered and more of a uh, jeans wash, I think they call it, or stone wash feel to the to the color. And I'll show you that in the scarf as well. Oh, the, the wrap. So here we go. I'll show you where I was when I was at number one. I think I finished number one's mini in the last episode. So that's this is number one here. And I already discovered that I made a mistake. Uh, you might notice that there is one color, and my second color, which should be my third, and my third should be my second. So those two should be switched. And we have it going to the next mini. And we have it going to through to the next. Oh, sorry about the ends. They're not all uh, woven in yet, but that's where I'm at. So I'm at the fifth mini right now and I'm halfway through, but this is going to be a mammoth length wrap. It reaches my wingspan already and I'm five foot eight. So that's how big it is. And I still have number five to finish six and seven. So I've got a feeling it's going to get close to eight feet long. So a really nice airy drapey wrap. This yarn at hundred percent cotton is great for I can, I'm going to say like uh, tropical weather, more warmer weather, if you want to add a bit of an accent, because it's cotton and quite a lacy number, it does breathe wonderfully. Uh, so that's my guess that it isn't, using this yarn isn't really for warmth, but it is definitely for accent, colour and accessorising your outfit in warmer climates. So yeah, I absolutely love it. Now, I did promise that I would tell a little bit of the colorway names and numbers as I was working through it. So I'll just stop the camera and get the labels. Okay, I have all the color labels on my fingers, so hopefully I get this correct. Uh, what we do is we'll take a look at the first color here. It is called uh, Cirrus, which is my number one. And that is color 110 in the Sheepies uh, color series. And then I did my whoopsie and I should have really put 111, but I put 112 in the next color. And that is duh, 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 Alto Cumulus. They have names to do with clouds I think or the sky so layers of the spheres that are kind of graded up above our heads and all different clouds as well. Now this one is 111 and that is my color uh, cumulus. Number four is this one it's getting slightly greener and greener as you can tell and that is Alto Stratus. And color five, which I've only done in this eyelet section here in between the, the bands of the dark charcoal purpley color and pink, that is Stratus. So those are the five that I'm on and I've got two more to, to add to the, to the scarf. And Talk about the modifications that I made. I'm just getting these labels off. They're stuck around my fingers. <laughs> With the section here in between the lace work, there was a wonderful stitch design that Erin had pieced together, which has these little spark-like, hence the name, I guess, spark-like spark 
uh, wrap, they they look like little um, uh, electrical sparks that go through, and I couldn't do the stitch with the cotton that wasn't flexible enough, so I was getting into problems with really loose uh, stitch work, and I thought to myself, I'm going to have to come up with another uh, series of different stitches just to add in that section and give it a different direction because this lace work is prominently giving a uh, sort of a lateral feel with the patterning whereas these ones were kind of like cutting through the pattern which is a lovely design feature so I decided to go with just eyelets in between garter stitching and I really like it once it wraps and drapes around it's going to create a really nice directional piece of uh, textures and I think that works up very nicely. So each little section area took me around four to five hours to knit up so I would be on this for about four to five hours and then maybe about two hours for this garter stitch area. So it is a slow pro process but hopefully in my next catch up with all of my whips this will become a finished object. And then obviously I have to weave in all my ends as well. So I want to show you the opposite side of the scarf pattern. It doesn't have the ridge work as, as prominent as the front side. So we have more of the softer feel to the direction of the eyelets. And then on the right side, you get more of the ridge work. So that's really a nice feature in that in that lace area. Before I forget to tell you what size needles I'm using and what brand, these are 3.5 millimeter Chagu stainless steel interchangeable needles. And I absolutely love this interchangeable set that I purchased. Not too pointy, pointy enough, doesn't split my yarn. I absolutely love these needles. It does glide off, so I've got to be quite careful with keeping an eye on what kind of cable length that I'm, I'm using. I did start off with a shorter cable length and then had to move on to a, a longer one because the cotton was just slipping off, the, uh, especially when it's getting as long as this. Uh, if you pick up the piece uh, awkwardly, like by the, one of the needles, it could easily slide off. So uh, just <laughs> a note of warning that these are very slippy needles and great when you're uh, wanting to work very quickly as well. So yeah, absolutely love this piece. Moving right along, I'm gonna to talk to you about my next piece and that is a sweater. Now, I did showcase this in my previous catch up on my whips and FOs and I didn't have a sleeve done on it, but now I have a sleeve. So I'll talk to you about the yarn that I use first, my needle sizes, and then I'll show you what I've done. I'm almost there. So the yarn that I used was from a, another sweater I was very unhappy with, and it wasn't the sweater pattern, it was all the yarn, it was just the combination of the two. The color of the yarn did not suit me, and also because it had some cotton in it, and I, I think it's polyester. I don't know what this one is made up of. It's like cotton and something, 50-50, uh, I think, blend. And it is the Comfy Cotton Blend by Lion Brand. On its own, it uh, looked like a. it was too washed out for me. I do like stronger colors to wear, more deeper, richer colors. So uh, I wanted to use the yarn, but I wanted to pair it with something that had a bit more vibrancy to it. And I found this yarn here purchased it from Little Knits and it is the Serendipity Tweed by Brown Sheep Company. Absolutely love this yarn. This also has a mull like quality to it. A little bit more subtle than this one. This one is quite speckly and the Serenity Tweed is a 60% cotton and 40% wool. So I like the wool factor in it. It'll give it some structure. I like it because when I'm blocking or if I need to advance the shaping a little bit more that the wool factor will allow me to do a little bit of that so that's great and I put them together in a 
I'm not sure whether it's officially called a two color rib slip stitch, but I think that's uh, how I Googled it and learned how to do it. I'm gonna uh, also put down in the link where I learned how to do this stitch from Tin Can Knit's website. And they showed me both ways of passing my float stitch in the front of the work and also in the back of the work. So I could choose which direction I wanted to build up my texture or my fabric. And they have some samples there on the website as well, which are great to see what you want to do with your yarn choices and what kind of stitch you want to, um, you want to do with uh, the slip stitching. So here it is here. It's not to any pattern. I just uh, knew how to do a raglan sweater where you start off from the top and you do your, uh, your collar and then you just work out through number counting where you want to separate for arms and then how deep you want to go for the armhole width or circumference of the armhole. And yeah, it's a little bit of math involved, but this is the two color rib slip stitch with the float passed in the back. So in the inside of this is the float. So you get this lovely, uh, I love this texture so much. It's very textural and it is very squishy, bouncy and stretchy like you would imagine a one by one ribbing to be. And these are the increases. I left one the blue color floating on top as the, um, it's almost like a design feature of just having the line come round all the way down to the, the raglan part of the of the jumper. And I did a, it was like a, a one by one rib knitted tube, which was folded in on itself. And I used a, uh, what's it called? Uh, it was, <laughs> the, the word escapes me. I know that you're screaming out, it's this. Uh, it is uh, something cast on. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called, but it has like life stitches uh, on your cast on edge. And uh, then I just uh, knit one by one all the way round through. And then I joined the life stitches together and continued knitting. So these are, I got this little tip from Needles at the Ready. Kevin was doing a sleeve. I think it was Kevin. It might have been Ray. Um, and where, as he was finishing one sleeve, he uh, was doing all of the uh, where you do the decreases, you kind of mark it with a stitch marker. And then as you're doing the second one, you kind of will follow the same rhythm of your, your uh, pattern, I guess, or your decreasing. And you just switch over each time you <laughs> you decrease, you take it from here and you move it over to the uh, other sleeve. So by the end of the sleeve, you should have exactly the same amount of count of stitches all the way through the sleeve at the same time. And yeah, I just did one by one ribbing on the end. The needle size that I used for the cuffs, collar and wristbands was a 3.75 set of knitting uh, millimeters of uh, knitting needles. And for the body and the sleeves where this slip rib stitch pattern is, I used a five millimeter. Yeah, so it is a slow process. This sleeve did take me about a week of uh, lunchtime knitting. And then I think I had one day where I was just focusing on finishing the sleeve. So I got a feeling it'll be in about another week or a week and a half to finish the jumper. Absolutely love it. I love it, love it, love it. It's so squishy. I can't wait because it is getting colder and now I'll be able to wear it, which is awesome. Moving right along, my next work in progress is a pattern that was generously gifted to me by my good friend, Jane. Hi, Jane. So Jane and I were communicating, I'm going to say maybe around three weeks ago, and she was showing me her slip stitch pattern she was working to, and I absolutely loved it. And I said, Jane, that is phenomenal. I absolutely can see so many options with that type of pattern. So lo and behold, I think it was maybe a day or two later in my inbox was, 
you've been gifted a pattern by Jane. So she bought me the pattern. So thank you so much for the generous gift. Now, I believe I can show you the front of this pattern because it just talks about the amount of yardage of your yarn that you need, needle sizes and the abbreviated terms. So it is called Merino Squares Boomerang by Stitch Nerd Design. And here are some of the examples that you can see. It's not a full example, it's just a bit of a teaser. And it's a triangle shape that comes in from, I think it doesn't grow on one side, but it grows on the other, because I'm doing, no, I think it's, it's uh, on the bias, but it grows more on one side. So it does get wider and wider as you're working your way from one tip. So I don't know what they call that, asymmetrical maybe? And uh, it calls for any yard, yarn that you want to use uh, and I'm using something that's I think different from uh, the pattern I'm using a DK and I'm using a six millimeter uh, set of knitting needles because it's a slip stitch as well I find that slip stitching may require a larger needle to what the actual ball of wool says that, or recommends you to use because it is um, you are kind of slipping lots of the floats behind and with all color work it's uh tends to be a little bit tighter than a regular garter or stockinette stitch but here i go i'm not sure about these colors but i'd love to get your feedback i think they're working and there's enough contrast there to see the the different kind of shapes that are going in there what do you think so i started down here and as you work up, you're kind of on the bias, but you're also growing one edge. Um, and so it's sort of creating a little bit of an archway here. I think that will accentuate more as I get more of the, through more of the yarn. And you'll see that how it's sort of like arcs. But that's the color work. Now I'm using a variegated yarn with a mustard color solid. I think it's it's subtle enough. I really like it, but I'd like to get your opinion as well. And the back side of it is more of just the floats. There's no patterning in there. It just looks a little messy, but I think when you've kind of got this beautiful pattern on the other side, you're, you're basically gonna get a lot of texture anyway once it gets big enough and you're gonna wrap it, it's gonna kind of fold and undulate and corrugate around your neck. So I think a little bit of that uh, floats on the back will probably hide away with all of the texture that you're getting in the front. So yeah, oops. This is what I'm using. They're quite woolly yarns, uh, quite rustic, uh, but when I wash it, I think it's gonna soften up so the two yarns that I'm playing with in the Murano Squares shawl is this one here, generously gifted to me by my two good friends from my home state, Victoria in Australia, Justin and Simone. Hi, Justin and Simone. This came from Bendigo Willen Mills. It was a trip that they took, I think maybe about a year and a half ago together. And it is an eight ply, it's called Rustic Mustard. So those are the details there of how much you get in the ball. And if you want the washing instructions, take a screen grab of that. I hope you can read that. And I think that this is a wonderful, very, very generous amount of yardage inside or meterage inside this ball. And I would use this yarn again. It's wonderful to work with, has great elasticity, and I think it has a little bit of a halo. It is quite a, a, a rustic yarn, so I'm going to give it a two out of five for uh, softness. When it washes up, I believe it actually gets softer because you'll, I don't know, put something with it that I'll show you a little bit later about how you can wash your woolens to get more um, softness in it and condition your, your woolens. But um, this is a wonderful yarn to work with. Love it a lot. 
And the next ball that I'm um, matching with it is this ball of yarn here. At Variegates, as you can see, I've probably gone through maybe two of the colors already, the gray into this brownish red rust color. So that's coming out and I can't wait to see how it works up when it gets to this kind of smoky ash color here. Lovely gift from our friend that we love so much here on YouTube, Crystal over at Bag -A Day. Hi Crystal again. And it is called Noro, the world of nature. One of my favorite yarns. And it is the color 1072. I don't know whether I can pronounce the name of this yarn. It is, uh, let's have a look. Curiopatora, Curiopatora, is it just there? And this one is uh, 100 grams as well. You get uh, 270 meters in it. I think it's 100% wool. Yes, 100% wool. Just there. Oh my God, I can't read. <laughs> okay, so those are the two that are in this little swatchy bit that I've done so far. I'm going to keep going until I run out of the mustard. Uh, so that's quite going to be quite a big wrap in the end or scarf. The last thing that I want to catch you up on is a whip that I started yesterday. So I only have a very small section done, but it is twofold why I'm doing this work. One is to write down what I did for another design that I kind of needed to work out of my brain. And I did showcase it a couple of podcasts ago and I wanted to make it again so I could write the instructions down to share with my yarn fiber friends out there. And another reason why I'm doing this is because I've chosen colors that inspired me by Setter's Calendar Cow. Now I've been doing Setter's Calendar Cow on and off and I've fallen behind. So I'm actually up to the month of June right now. So I've looked back at the calendar. I have it opposite you, behind you on my, on my wall. And it is the month of June is celebrating Yarn Joy Podcast. So I want to say, hi Yarn Joy Podcast. I have in, been inspired by your lavenders in a uh, green grass and also there is a, a large uh, inner tube tire and a pavement at the top and Seda has chosen like a pastel -y kind of lemon color for the background so I think it's lemon or it could be green I think it might be a, a slight light green actually not lemon and I chose th these yarns and hopefully they will work with the with the color inspiration. It is Malabrigo's Rustista in this wonderful green and purplish color. It's almost like a steely purple. And it is the in the color doo -doo -doo, 146 Indesita. Indesita. I believe someone told me that Indesita is like a young girl. So it's been named after a young girl. And this Rastita, which is the collection of Malabrigo, it is in a kind of like a single ply, I think. It's very, very uh, fluffy. And I think it's been felted a little bit. So. When I was purchasing this, they had them at a discounted price and they did have a um, kind of description that this yarn was slightly felted. So uh, when I balled up the other hank that I'm using in this piece, it did actually stick to itself a lot when I was winding it into the ball. So it is slightly a felted yarn. And I'm pairing it with... Uh, Got to get a fresh ball out so that you can see it in its glory. I'm pairing it with Alare Sun Kiss Speckled Yarn. It is pure cotton. So I, again, I'm blending cotton and wool together. Uh, I really like these colors here. They don't really fall into the category of the photograph. 
if I'm pulling at a stretch, it might be like the paved, uh, like the sandy area that's at the top of the picture. But I really like them together with each other, these two together. So that's what I've chosen. And I'm redoing the Festive Dragon wrap and I'm writing down my instructions. So that's how I'm kind of, you know, hitting two birds with one stone, I guess. So I've got my, my make here started and I'm showing you upside down actually. It's gotta go this way. That's it. So the chevron are at the base of the wrap and then I'll, I'll work my way up into doing the arcade stitch and then it will be just the cotton yarn that I'll be using for the arcade stitch. So this is the combination of the two playing together and I'm creating my ridge work. Now I'm doing it a little longer than the past one that I did. The last one that I did was probably my wingspan, so a little bit over... I think it was six feet long and this one is definitely going to be around I'm going to say eight feet so I'm making it a bit bigger by two feet in this one yeah so that's what I'm doing it's a crocheted uh, piece and I'm, I'm trying out a new to me hook it was gifted to me by my friend Karen Miller hi Karen and I'm really enjoying working with it it's somewhere here on the ground here we go. It is the Furls hook. It's a five millimeter and it has a different head to what I'm used to. And I'm using this one for the Rastista and for the other one, which is the cotton, I'm using a slightly smaller hook because the five mil was giving me too much of a loopy loose stitch so i'm using this one here which is a four a uh, whole millimeter down so that's a four millimeter so i'm using a five and a four depending on what yarn i'm using at the time so i think it's working up nice hard to say because i need more on it but i i think they're working up okay We'll see. So a bit of a question mark with that one. And what I'm doing, just to show you how difficult when I'm writing up my patterns uh, to share with you, because I'm just scribbling it up. So I'm not really a pattern writer, but this is what <laughs> is in my book right now. Um, isn't that strange? It's like a different language. So I have to decipher the chart that I'm drawing up in my chicken scratch into uh, legible English, I guess, or a crocheted version of language that other people will be able to read. Now, this is not intended to be um, a pattern that is going to be for market. It's going to be just for my friends to play around with. So I'll make it available. And if you want to try it you can try it and if there's an error in there you can let me know i'll i'll love to fix it up but um it's really just because some people have asked for it so i'm i'm just uh doing it to share and it's not going to be to purchase or anything like that so i'm not um by any stretch of the means trying to create a new career out of uh pattern writing or anything like that i just want to share it with my friends so with the is said and done, now I'm going to be moving on to some acquisitions. And because I did mention about caring for rustic wool and washing it to make it a little softer, I'm going to talk about what I use in my detergent to wash. Now, this was a gift from my mother-in-law. And as you can see, I'm almost out of it. It is Mont Cashmere shampoo with, lan uh, with lavender oil. And the use of this is to soak your garment, not agitating it too much in the water and putting a cap full of this liquid in with it. So the fragrance is quite soft. It's not hard. It's something that has undertones of lavender, 
something that would be like if you're walking into a store that may be like a spa resort and they have like a diffuser in the corner, you might have a scent that's coming out of there. So that that's lavender, it's kind of that smell. And because I was almost finishing the um, that bottle, I went to my local yarn store, which is Uptown Yarns. Hi, Judy and Jenny. They're the workers that run the store there. And I bought some Euculin. It is uh, in the lavender scent as well. Again, very subtle. I did smell this before purchasing. And it is $15.99 Canadian. So yeah, I guess with taxes, it comes to just under 20 bucks. So enough to keep you going for a long time. Cap fill here, cap fill there, whenever you're washing something, it goes a long way. So you don't have to rinse this out as well. So once you are soaking it in the water with a cap full of it in, um, you just have to gently wring it out and then pad dry with your towel or blotting cloth or whatever you use to kind of like get the excess water out and yeah there's no rinsing involved so the the fragrance and the softness helps relax the the yarn as well and I think a part of that might be because the dye makes it quite brittle too depending on what color the dye is or what kind of uh, method of dye it is um and while I was in Uptown Yarn yeah you guessed it I had to purchase some yarn so I noticed that these yarns here from Cascade Cherub Aran the wave collection very very super soft a little bit of a fuzz on it it mulls between these bright and very youthful fun colors and these were $8.99 regularly but they're on sale for 20% off so I believe uh, I ended up paying like $26 for all of it and then they took 20% off which was an, a $5 off so $21 I think I paid for all of these in the end so three balls and the colorway here is a number 604 oh, sorry 602 and they are saying here that you can machine wash this and tumble dry on gentle and it is 100 grams in the ball giving me 240 yards or 220 meters it is 55 percent nylon and 45 percent acrylic so a really soft yarn i could see this being a very youthful playful uh garment like whether it's for a baby or if you want to make a scarf for a younger person or even if you wanted to have just some sort of accent uh, through color work I think this would be a, a great addition to my stash so I can't wait to use this one it does have a little bit of a sheen to it I do like that and it's super soft I'm gonna give this a four out of five for softness it does not have any itchy factor to it at all so no undergarments required with this particular variety of yarn it is made in China and the weight of it is, it says here Aran, which is kind of like a slightly thicker yarn than a four weight or a worsted weight, but I'm going to say it's more like it, treat it more like a lighter worsted because it is quite a, th uh, a thinner yarn. And the needle size, mm, they don't give you any suggestion on needle sizes. Oh yes they do it is a 4.5 to 5 millimeter set of knitting needles and no crochet hook recommendation but i would say roughly around the same probably a five millimeter crochet hook absolutely love it i went on ravelry to see what they make with this yarn and there's this beautiful shawl and it's uh kind of pinned up on a, a cottage style beach house and uh, fell in love with that shawl so I might be going back on Ravelry just to find where that shawl is and what pattern was used in it. So that was my acquisition from Uptown Yarns but there is something here that I haven't shown and it's been here for ages. It's been 
a Hobie Mystery cake bag. Now, these were being sold uh, when I purchased them. I think they were like 39 or 40 US dollars. Uh, translates to, I'm going to say, mm, maybe 48 Canadian dollars. And you, you're guaranteed to get four cakes in the collections that they have on Hobie, whether it's a King Cole cake or whether it's a salt and deluxe cake or whether it's something else. But you want to see what I got? Okay. I got my little invoice here on how much it was. So that's helpful. With no prices. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that doesn't help me, but I think it was like $39, $40. I do go back time and time again to see how much the cakes are going for. And sometimes they're out of stock. Sometimes it jumps up to 43 US dollars for four cakes. Um, I've seen it as maybe as low as $39, but I can't remember what I got my one for. So what did you think I got? I know I've been seeing so many of my YouTuber friends out there who have been getting the, the Sultan cakes and a couple that got the, uh, the Cotton King Deluxe cake. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> I remember now. So I got, I, I think this is the Sultan Pastelli or uh, like the pastel range of colors. So here's one here. The gradation is of the lighter variety. So we get the color in the center and it goes out to more of a white. And the Sultan Pastels are four strands of yarn together or little threads that you hold together when you're making your uh, your work and it has a center pull now there are never any labels I believe in the when you go for the lucky grab bags for the cotton uh, for the the cake variety and the other ones as well I think you don't get uh, labels as well but I'm not too sure. I have only seen a half a dozen of my friends unboxing these probably three or four times. And this is what I got in mine. And I got the second color here. Um, there's the easy start pull tab. I think the other one lost it. I love that color. And there's another one there, different from the first one. Yeah, slight difference. One is more teal and the other one is more purpley. And a green one. I'm really happy with the yarn that I received in my Hobie grab mystery cake bag and this type of yarn is great for shawls wraps i've done a couple of lightweight cotton shawls before in patterns like edlothia and i think also the post virus would look beautiful in a very light pastel -y, beautiful cake like this my ideas are endless i do think that i would like to try uh, one or two versions of this with a combination yarn where I'm pairing it with a variegated as well. Uh, so look for that in the future. I just don't know when that's going to call to me. I'll grab them when I the, the inspiration hits. So I'm going to put these into stash and I can't wait to use them. Put them down here. Now one of the wonderful things that Hobie has is a point system where you can gather your points together and then use them for gifts like in their uh, rewards. They have a rewards catalog and you can get things like stitch markers and you can get different yarn as well and accessory pouches, all that type of thing. And I had collected a few of them because I'd done a couple of reviews as well for Hobie and they were adding my points up and I thought, I'm going to go and check what I can get in the rewards catalog. So apparently I've heard, correct me if I'm wrong, but this type of cotton tweed is only available for 
uh, purchasing when you use your points. So this is called the Erica Knight, born in Britain, Gossipium, Gossipium Cotton Tweed. That's it there. I'm not too sure how many points I had used just to get a ball, but I managed to get four of them. I got two in each of the colors that you see here. It's a 50 gram uh, donut ball of cotton and it is 96% burn, brune, brune woolly, brune woolly. That must be in a different language and 4% polyester. And what else can I tell you about this yarn? Duh, duh, duh. I don't know. Oh, here we go. It's uh, 125 meters in each of the 50 gram balls. And they're saying here to use a three to 3.5 millimeter set of knitting needles. And it doesn't say what to use for crochet hook but I would say it's probably a little bit bigger. I'm going to say maybe a four millimeter. The colorway is zero one, no color number, and there are no washing instructions on this label. So maybe with cotton, you can get away with uh, machine washing. I'm not sure. I hand wash everything anyway. So I've got two in the colorway number one and number two, this color here is called Color 17, so it's a gray color. And the tweed flecks on this one are kind of a beige and a darker gray. Just there. This one has seen better days, but <laughs> um, yeah. And unfortunately there is no manufacturing details on where it is made either. Most or a lot of Hobie yarns come from Turkey. I'm not sure where this one is is made yeah but again it's very much like the BC garn that I got from Hobie to try out and it is also a cotton linen base uh, this one is a little softer and the twist on it is it looks to me to be a slightly looser twist than the BC garn Um, there is a little bit of a look at the tail end of how many bits make up the, oh, can you see it? There you go. Quite a number of strands there. But yeah, I can't wait to try it. I think those yarns are great for my stash. I'm going to put them into uh, projects and circulation, hopefully in the near future, and I can talk to you a little bit more about it. I also got this in the package as well as a gift and it's the stitch marker to tell you what hook size that you're using. I really like that. It's 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5 and 7 millimeter. That concludes all the yarny goodness, but I am now going to switch gears and talk to you about what I've been up to here in the community that I've moved into and also a family excursion that I went on with to visit some murals with my folks when they were here back in August. And if you want to stick around for that, please do. You're most welcome to. But if you need to get on with your busy day, I want to say thank you for joining us up to this point. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk to you about is a special mural to me. And it is in the area where I am living right now. It's kind of like a kinship, I guess, with many stories that interweave uh, in my life as well. Now, this mural, particular mural, is called the Liang's Mural, and it's uh, on the building of a downtown grocery store, which was once a grocery store, it's not anymore, but the family that operated it was called the Liang's. Now, that's, that is my last name as well, and it is uh, com commemorative of a family who came into this little community and they built up a reputation of being a generous family about you know how they uh, helped build a lot of the community where they were grocery sellers so I have a kinship with them because in my own history my father did something very similar he immigrated to 
Australia, not Canada, but he came from China as well. Now he jumped on a ship, I don't know, it was like pre-World War II. He was quite a young, a young man. And he jumped on a ship with his younger sister and brother. And they all kind of got separated uh, when they were immigrating through the different parts of uh, Malaysia. And he made his way to Australia. His sister was in Malaysia, like that's where um, she got off the boat and basically immigrated and started her process there. And his younger brother uh, went missing. He had lost connection with him uh, during that boat trip. But um, when my father was alive, uh, he uh, was would always keep an ear to the ground and ask the Chinese community whether they knew of uh, his brother and what happened to him. Uh, so he got a couple of leads and one of them was that maybe his younger brother was here in Canada. So uh, yeah, uh, the uh, couple of trips that he made to Canada when he was alive, uh, didn't, um, he didn't find where his brother was. So uh, a lot of the exploration or the investigations kind of fell flat. Um, so yeah, he uh, he settled in Australia and he became a food manufacturer in Australia and he uh, created a dim sum, like little dumplings and stuff and sold them to the various fast food places or supermarkets. So he was kind of like building a reputation for being one of the first um, Asian produce makers on different dumplings and food in uh, the city of Melbourne. So um, when I saw the mural for the first time before me and my husband Chad moved here, it really drew a lot of those ideas of my own history where this family was uh, was being recognised for their involvement with the community here in Courtney. They painted a beautiful mural to the family. And uh, I was thinking maybe that could have been my dad's brother who had come over to Canada, perhaps. But just a little bit of a side note here, Liang is quite a popular surname in the Chinese uh, culture or the Chinese um, family line. So it's very much, if you want to compare it to an Anglo-Saxon or a, a Caucasian name, it's very much like a Smith or a Jones. So I don't know, like maybe the calling for me to settle here is to perhaps maybe reconnect with a Liang family that may be related to me. I don't know. So at the end, I will add in the photograph of the mural that I'm talking about uh, in amongst the other murals that are in Shemanus, which is a different township from Courtney. It is closer towards Victoria, which is at the bottom of the island. And the day that we took my folks down to Shemanus to look at the murals, I have a couple of notes here that I want to just read to you about this, the, the place before I show you the, the footage that I took of Shemanus. Uh, okay, the details that I found on Shemanus was through a website and it is Cowichan.com, which is the re larger region that Shemanus falls in. And there are 63 murals to date. The murals all talk about uh, themes within the area. So that is uh, people, uh, culture, industry, and so forth. Logging, uh, the, the railway that goes through there as well. Uh, it talks about like documenting all of those things visually in murals. And it's a beautiful walk. Uh, you follow these footprints that are on the ground so that you can see where you're going uh, and lay out a bit of a, tra a trail of uh, connecting all the murals together. And uh, there's a great store there for lunch. If you're ever in there for the day and you want to check out uh, where you can eat or treats that you can get, there's a really wonderful Chinese, <laughs> well, it's, in, it's like an eclectic mix menu but we really liked the noodles on the menu. So that's what we had. And the store is called Bonnie Martin. I'm looking at my notes down here. 
So if you're there and you, you see Bonnie Martins and you're hungry, go in there for lunch. It's great. They have a really good wicked noodle soup as well as different pies that are in season. Like we tried a peach pie and it was delicious. Uh, yeah. So the other thing that you can do there, if you're just wanting to drop in for a snack and it's the weather's nice and warm right now, it's turning, but you can still have an ice cream. They have a great ice cream stall, which is in a little arcade. And uh, if you, I forgot what the name is, but if you were to walk in any gift store or uh, speak it to anyone who is from the area, that will direct you to the place where the ice cream is in the arcade. I hope that you'll enjoy the footage that I'm going to add in here and it'll showcase some of the murals, not the whole 63 of them. Obviously, you'd be sitting there for like hours, but uh, just key ones that we found that were very interesting. So please take a look. And with that, I think I'll catch you up in the next episode. I do have a some happy mail that arrived. Uh, it actually is a yarn swap. So I'm going to showcase that in a video. You'll probably see me dressed in the same thing directly after this. So I'm not sure when I'm going to roll out all these videos that I'm going to make today out, but um, enjoy the footage. I'd love to hear your comments. Let me know if there's any particular pattern that you've drawn to that I spoke about this week and any of the yarns that you've ever used before. I'd love to hear what you've used them in and how you how you felt when you were using them. So uh, those comments can be read. I'll get to them and answer them because I love the connection that we make here on YouTube. And I will see you next week. Look after yourselves. Bye.